In 2023, a mysterious door was reportedly discovered in Antarctica. The discovery was initially shared by an observant Facebook user on July 30th, and the image revealed a shadowy square-shaped mark resembling a hidden entrance on the eastern side of Antarctica. This discovery has once again sparked public interest in the topic of secret Nazi bases in Antarctica, and today our video is dedicated precisely to this mysterious subject. Watch this video until the end, and you will learn all the details of the secret expeditions to Antarctica, how this mystery is connected to Werner von Braun, and whether Hitler really escaped to Antarctica at the end of World War II. So let's get started. We'll be broken up in the open field. Did you know that Antarctica is a resource reserve for humanity? The sixth continent hides vast mineral treasures in its depths. According to scientists' estimates, Antarctica's subsoil contains a colossal amount of coal, copper ore, molybdenum, mica, graphite, nickel, lead, zinc, and other resources. The U.S. Geological Survey claims that Antarctica's subsoil holds enormous reserves of oil, 6.5 billion tons, and natural gas, over 4 trillion cubic meters. It's not surprising that the leading world powers show a lively and unabated interest in Antarctica, and there is no reason to deny that the Nazis were among the first to express this interest. But is it even possible to build subglacial bases? Did the Third Reich have the means, technology, resources, and motivation for such a grandiose project? Let's find out together. Join us as we delve into the shadows and unlock the secrets of a clandestine chapter that history tried to bury beneath the Antarctic ice. Get ready for a chilling expedition into the unknown. The secrets of a Nazi base in Antarctica await. So let's go over some facts you probably didn't know. The possibility... Have significant underground structures been created by humans? Certainly yes, repeatedly and universally. Let's start with widely known Derinkuyu and Kaimakli, underground cities in Cappadocia, dating back to the second millennium BCE. Add to this Setenil de las Bodegas in Spain or Naours in France, although there are many more examples of underground construction even in prehistoric times. Now let's recall Hitler's well-known underground bunkers such as Werewolf. Two, did the Third Reich have a fleet? Definitely yes, including submarines suitable for such operations, but we'll talk more about this later. Three, did the Nazis have resources? The Third Reich invested around $300 billion in modern money just in building autobahns. About $200 billion were invested in the construction of the Atlantic Wall. The new Reich Capital Project planned to invest several hundred billion dollars in today's terms, and so on. As we can see, the Nazis willingly invested even very large sums in projects they considered promising. 4. Did the Nazis have technology? The Nazis had the most advanced technologies in various fields, evidenced by their rocketry and jet aviation. But let's focus on the area of interest, mining and underground construction. They developed advanced mechanical excavators and drilling machines for faster and more efficient tunnel construction. It's a proven fact that Nazis constructed intricate tunnel networks for infrastructure, transportation, and military purposes. They built intricate underground networks for production, storage, and defense, including the Mittelwerk V2 rocket factory and the Berghof tunnels within the Obersalzberg complex. What conclusions do we draw? The Nazis had vast experience, technology, and resources to create bases in Antarctica, along with means of transporting cargo and people. Do you still consider the creation of a base in Antarctica as a fantastic tale? Mysterious Cavities in 2010, scientists discovered evidence of hydrothermal vents on the seafloor near Antarctica. Subsequent research has unveiled additional hydrothermal vent systems in the waters surrounding Antarctica. In 2018, researchers identified a volcanic heat source beneath a major Antarctic glacier, underscoring the geologically dynamic nature of this region. It is thus an established fact that within the depths of Antarctic ice, there exist geothermal anomalies capable of creating substantial cavities in the ice cover. Who would dare to assert that the Nazis couldn't have found such cavities earlier and utilized them for establishing their bases? Nazi Antarctic Expedition In January-February 1939, 
A secret German expedition visited Dronning Mordland, Antarctica, apparently with the intention of establishing a base there. The books The Secret of the Sixth Reich by Trevor Ravenscroft and The Nazi UFO Files, Secret Encounters in World War II and Beyond by Nick Cook, claims that Hitler and his Nazi allies escaped to Antarctica after the war, and they present a variety of evidence to support this claim. Some of this evidence includes eyewitness accounts, documents, and even physical evidence such as debris from German submarines that was found in the Antarctic. By the way, did you know that 3,200 photographs taken during this expedition mysteriously disappeared at the end of the war? They could have shed light on the true objectives that the Nazis pursued in Antarctica, but alas, someone ensured that the truth vanished into the abyss of the unknown forever. About bases. Some researchers claim that the Nazis established two secret bases in Antarctica, New Swabia and New Berlin. It is suggested that the Nazis could have acquired knowledge about the cavities in the Antarctic ice shelf from llamas during their expedition to Tibet. Of course, you and I would hardly venture to the other end of the world, armed only with a dubious ancient map. However, considering the Nazis' fanatical devotion to occultism and ancient knowledge, such a turn of events doesn't seem entirely implausible. Some theorists claim the Nazis discovered ancient alien technology buried under the Antarctic ice and used it to develop anti-gravity craft called flying saucers. Nazis transport. According to experts, the so-called Führer's Convoy, a group of long-range oceanic submarines comprised at least 35 submarines. Even skeptics are forced to acknowledge that even towards the end of the war, Germany had at least five oceanic submarines that were fully capable of conducting expeditions to Antarctica, even under the conditions of the maritime blockade imposed by Britain in September 1939. An interesting fact, on some oceanic submarines that surrendered to the Allies at the end of World War II, large shipments of mercury were discovered, which is believed to be used as fuel in advanced aircraft. In addition, Nazi documents mentioned the Project Honabu that alleged advanced flying disc aircraft with long-range capabilities. Some believe the Nazis used Honabu technology to reach and establish bases in Antarctica. Dubious admissions. On July 10, 1945, when the hostilities of World War II in Europe had already concluded for two months, a German submarine with the number U-530 under Oberleutnant Otto Vermuth surfaced off the coast of Argentina and surrendered to the Argentine authorities in the port of Mar del Plata. During numerous interrogations, the crew of the German submarine claimed that they were sent in late April to patrol the shores of the United States, lost contact, and as soon as they learned that the war was over, the submarine's command decided to surrender. On August 17th, in the same location, submarine U-977 under Oberleutnant Heinz Schaefer also surrendered. Referring to this episode, American researcher Joseph Farrell wrote, At first, the Allies suspected that these submarines had transported someone of particular importance from Germany to South America, possibly even Adolf Hitler himself. In light of this possibility, both captains were detained for questioning. Both captains insisted that they did not disembark any political figures from Germany and South America. Later, Captain Schaefer wrote a book recounting the final voyage of his submarine. Unfortunately, no one believed Schaefer. Bernhardt, who was aboard U-530, claims that English and American intelligence learned that U-530 and U-977 visited Antarctica before returning to South America but the true nature of these expeditions remained unknown to them. Operation Paperclip After World War II, many Nazi scientists found employment in the U.S. space program. Conspiracy theorists suggest some may have harbored secret knowledge about Antarctica and shared it with their new employers. Who knows? This may have been one of the reasons for Operation High Jump, which will be discussed below. High Jump Expedition Richard Byrd's Operation High Jump expedition was formally considered purely scientific, although it was entirely funded by the U.S. Navy. In a rare case, both supporters of the traditional approach and those leaning towards a conspiracy scenario agree that the expedition had not so much a scientific but a military character. 
This is eloquently indicated by the composition of the American fleet, which included the flagship Mount Olympus, destroyers Brownson, Henderson, aircraft carriers Currituck, Pine Island, Philippine Sea, a submarine, and numerous support warships. Doesn't it seem extremely implausible to explain such a fleet composition with scientific goals? Additionally, it should be noted that the total number of expedition members was around 4,700 people, of whom only 25 were scientific researchers. Stunning fiasco. It is known that the Operation High Jump expedition was planned for eight months, but in reality, it lasted just over two months before being hastily terminated. Contrary to the rather absurd official version, many researchers are convinced that the reason for the premature end of the so-called scientific research lies in the fact that Richard Byrd's expedition was attacked by unidentified forces, resulting in significant human and material technical losses. On March 5, 1947, in the Chilean newspaper El Mercurio, an article was published under the signature of journalist Lee Van Atta, who accompanied the expedition. The article quoted the words of Rear Admiral Richard Byrd. The journalist wrote, Today Admiral Byrd declared to me that the United States should adopt effective measures of defense against enemy aircraft flying from the polar regions. Furthermore, he explained that he has no intention of alarming anyone. But the bitter reality is that in case of a new war, the United States will be attacked by aircraft flying at fantastic speeds from one pole to another. In the book, Reich of the Black Sun, Nazi Secret Weapons and the Cold War Allied Legend, Joseph P. Farrell notes the fact that after Byrd's return to the U.S. and his report in Washington, all expedition journals and the personal diaries of Rear Admiral Byrd were confiscated by the government and classified. They remain classified to this day. Unscientific Losses Shortly after the return of the Operation High Jump Fleet to the United States, fragmentary information began to appear in the media that Richard Byrd's fleet did not return in full. Off the coast of Antarctica, it lost at least one ship, 13 aircraft, four were shot down, nine were disabled, and about 40 personnel. According to other data, 68 were killed. In April 1947, Richard Byrd gave lengthy explanations during a classified session of the Presidential Special Commission in Washington. The commission's summary contained the following lines. The ships and planes of the 4th U.S. Antarctic Expedition were attacked by strange flying saucers that emerged from under the water and moving at tremendous speed inflicted significant damage on the expedition. According to Rear Admiral Byrd himself, these remarkable aircraft were undoubtedly produced in camouflaged aircraft factories hidden in the Antarctic ice, whose designers had mastered some unknown energy used in the engines of these vehicles. Bird is attributed with the following words. We need protection against the high speed and highly maneuverable fighters of the Germans, actively operating in polar latitudes. Such planes do not need multiple refuelings to hit targets anywhere on the planet. These machines, which damaged our expedition completely, from metal smelting to the last screw, are produced beneath the ice in factory buildings arranged in natural cavities. Anticipating reasonable questions about energy sources, I'll say that there is an atomic power station operating there. The Germans carried out the transfer of specialists, food, everything necessary for setting up production and life from 1935 to 1945. By the way, did you know that Richard Byrd was a member of a Masonic Lodge? This opens a new dimension to the question of Nazi activity in Antarctica and the interest in this issue from the perspective of the Masons. So the future may surprise us with new discoveries and revelations. The Mysterious Von Braun Expedition In 1966, a US expedition named Deep Freeze was dispatched to Antarctica. Everything seemed quite usual and even, one might say, traditional for another American expedition, except for the main participants. The most notable among them was the creator of the U.S. space program, Werner von Braun. At first glance, von Braun's visit to Antarctica, which lasted for months, appeared rather peculiar. It was the very time when the U.S. lunar program was entering its final stage, preparing for the manned lunar module's landing on Earth's satellite. One might think that von Braun's place should have been at the Marshall Space Flight Center, where he was the director at that time. 
What compelled von Braun and his colleagues to venture to the other end of the earth during such a critical moment? Von Braun himself provided the official version, explaining the expedition's interest in studying climatic conditions, testing equipment and technology, in an article published in the 1967 issue of Popular Science titled Spaceman's Look at Antarctica. However, it raises significant doubts that such mundane objectives could divert the leader of the most crucial and expensive U.S. program from his real duties in such a pivotal period. The mysterious and ominous truth remains concealed under the veil of secrecy. Unexplained Seismic Activity in 1978, mysterious low-frequency vibrations were detected emanating from beneath the Antarctic ice. Some propose these could be signals from hidden Nazi technology or communication systems. Vast expanses of Antarctica remain under the kilometers of ice, unexplored and shrouded in mystery. Some researchers believe potential Nazi bases could be hidden in these unknown regions, as well as a host of other secrets and mysteries. That's all the facts for today. We'll get back to you in a couple days with a new dizzying investigation. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to always be aware of the most mysterious and amazing events of civilization.